the lead. And it says we are live. Hello. One more time. Hello, folks. Hello. It's amazing how quickly these Tuesdays come right. I'll swear the weeks are getting shorter. That's right. It's probably the government, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The, um, the government's controlling the weather. You have to have tinfoil on your head at all times. <laughs> Well, otherwise, I'll look as though I have. Actually. Otherwise, they know what you're thinking. If you notice, when you say something out loud, seven minutes later, you get an Instagram ad. Oh, yes, or an ad, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So can you see us, Mark? So are you yeah. confirming we're live? Mm -hmm. Jolly, jolly good. Mm -hmm. Well, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, Tuesday darling. Is it time to get the Christmas tree down yet? I think so. I can see Martin shaking his head upstairs. Oh, God, the Christmas tree again. I think he said something. I think the second word was off. Off. I think so. Something off, yes. Yeah. Mm. Sex and travel. Do you yeah. like sex and travel? That's though? the one. Oh, that's the one. That's yeah. the one. Well, we're okay. very excited to have a uh, long distance, remote, fabulous guest for you today, all the way from the UK. Well, where... I hope he's not too remote. No. <laughs> um, this gentleman is so accomplished, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, I'm going to click on here and just tell you a little bit about Richard. So for the past... 20 odd years, Richard, and they're very odd years. Richard Olaf has been a broadcaster and journalist with both the BBC and commercial radio. His career began with KCBC and Kettering, which later became Connect FM. And he's done all kinds of light FM, um, Forest, he's with Forest now. He did HFM in Market Harbour, 102.3, Leicestershire. He's been a news editor, a station manager. He's worked on Rutland Radio for those Ruttles fans out there. In a stripper. Oh, wait. oh for gotcha. sure. We wouldn't have him on if he wasn't. <laughs> um, and one of the things I want to ask him about later is how the heck he wound up on the, the independent newspaper's happy list. So without further ado, yes. all the way from uh, the well, UK just... on the other end of a string and a tin can, the crowd goes wild for, ladies and gentlemen, broadcaster, Rich. author, terribly posh gentleman, Richard, Richard Owen. Owen. Hello, darling. Hello. Hi. How are Hi. you? It might be yeah. half past seven where you are. <laughs> yes, 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 exactly. What is that breakfast? Is that orange juice, yeah. is it? Uh, of yeah, course. of course. Yes. Naturally. Oh, Naturally. Yeah. Actually, uh, before we begin, can I just say this isn't the real Richard Olive. This oh. is the this is the AI version. Ah, okay. Oh, I see. So it's slightly more intelligent and damn more attractive. <laughs> and does he know where the car keys are? Hasn't got a clue. Uh, no. <laughs> Can't remember a thing, Angie. No, I know the feeling. Yeah, well, that's, that's menopause, so I don't suppose we can uh, accuse you of that. But, oh, you anyway. never know in these days of yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to strange times, that. Angie. Strange times. Strange times, yes. indeed. Mm. So we've got folks on from Sammy Starshine from Atlanta and Albert from Illinois. Debbie Martin, not sure where she is, but we've got lots, lots of people on from all over the world. Oh, and um, want to introduce. We'll introduce Hello. them to you. So this is a bit weird for you, isn't it? Having interviewed literally thousands of people. Oh, royalty and politicians. And, and McCartney's. McCartney's. Lots of, lots of McCartney's, yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> this must oh, be wow. odd sitting in the uh, on the other side of the microphone, is it? I find it very strange because the temptation is to, is to <laughs> say to Angie, Sir Angie, how do you clean your sink? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I do. That's the best advice I've ever heard. <laughs> no, I just sit in it to wash myself. <laughs> oh dear! No, no it is it, Ruth. It really is. It is a strange scenario because, uh, for the best part of, I would say the last twenty years, all I've done is interview other people, and I actually yes. enjoy. I actually enjoy doing it. I get a, a kick out of it because you meet so many different people. It's wonderful. Yeah. In fact, I think I should be on American television late night. Well, I think you should be some kind of ro yeah. royal correspondent from the forest or the, you know, whatever. <laughs> the, 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 which, which, hang on, which king are we talking about? We're talking about oh, king, king John with Robin Hood in the forest. <laughs> you have got a new king, I believe, haven't you? Yeah, we they have. Had a, they had a bit of a party last May, I think. Yeah, didn't you? yeah. Bit didn't of, ask me. It didn't, we weren't invited. Mind so. you, he shares a birthday with me, 14th of November, and the miserable tosspot never sends me a card, so... No. So he doesn't. No, he doesn't. No, he's not. He's not good at the card writing, Angie. Not very. No, good. believe not. No. Dear, dear. So <laughs> winding, winding this back. Yeah. How did we all? I know. I feel like I've known you forever. Um, I know it's weird. Yeah. That sounds like weird. the first line of a limerick, doesn't it? I feel as I've known you forever. Yeah. So we've got. We've got oh, one of those later. So by the you. river. Indeed, <laughs> Paul Moody. If you're watching, there will be a limerick today. Ah. Um, 
So, yeah, how did we, who, who introduced us? I can us? tell you, I was listening to uh, somebody on the BBC, the other side, and um, they were talking about an act called Four Puffs and a Piano. Oh, that's and I thought they sounded like great fun, and I, I eventually found them. And it said that they were going to be on the Richard Olaf show at whatever radio station you were at then. So I looked that up, and I called the station, and they put me through to you. And, uh, you know, we never turned back from there. Well, the, can I just say the weird thing about that was it was a strange time here in the UK because at that time, um, Jonathan Ross, a presenter on television, yeah. he was the one that introduced the four puffs and a piano on his show. Yeah. And that particular show, it, this, it, it was a really strange thing, this, Angie, because it wasn't just you that was affected that night. It was four puffs and a piano because I can't really mention what went on. But um, as a consequence, as a consequence, they had nothing to do that day. So they came on my, they were going to come on my show, but they couldn't because of then what happened with the Jonathan Ross show. And then someone said, I've got this lady on the line called Angie McCartney. I said, so the first thing I said to you, Angie, was, uh, are you Sir Paul McCartney's stepmother? And you said, I am. I thought, oh my God, um, this, in my best this, this is going to be tough. I thought, this is going to be tough. God. I was expecting four puffs and I got you. <laughs> Same <laughs> thing. One, one old time. <laughs> Same thing, That's really. If, if you count the earrings in the feather boa collection, it's about 50-50, isn't it? It is really, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, anyway, one thing you, know, you said the other day, no matter how old and how fat I get, my earrings still fit me. Yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah, that's reassuring, Doesn't, isn't it? No matter what your doctor says, no matter how much chocolate you eat, your earrings will still fit. Still fit. Still fit. Absolutely. So just remember that tonight when you're getting dressed up to go out, Richard. I, yeah, I'll do the best. This is it, by the way. I dressed, so up, dressed, I'm, dressed, I'm dressed up. up as curtains for you. I was going to say, it's a, bit, it's a bit Sound of Music. Julie Andrews had had the scissors to that, wouldn't you? <laughs> I was going to do that. I was going to do that, but then I thought, no, I can't be bothered. No, no, indeed no, no, not. No, 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 I've gone no. all Hawaii. Hello, so, Hawaii. <laughs> so, in fun. fact, the four puffs and a piano didn't turn up that day, did they? And no. She was saying it was something to do with their other commitments. And you got stuck with me instead. And yeah. we've never looked back since. And then we went on to have a radio show together called Tips and Tricks, didn't we? Dickie's Domestics. Dickie's Domestics, yes. Dickie's Domestic Tips. And it, Angie, I thought we'd probably only do it for like, I don't know, two or three weeks maybe if we were lucky. Yeah. Nine years we did that. No. Nine years, yeah. Oh, I'll be sending you an invoice. <laughs> My, mine should have been, mine's already with you. You just haven't opened it. I mean, it's... <laughs> It, no, but nine years, Angie. I can't. I can't believe it. You know, and really, I, yeah. Tell, tell the folks, Richard. Tell the folks what that segment was about and how it came about. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know yeah, how well, it came about, but you, but it was your really, question, I think, wasn't it? it was really, well, we, we were talking when we. Well, I think it was when we first started to talk, and you sort of said something along the lines of, "My mum taught me how to do this, that, and the other," and I thought, well, we can learn so much from. Uh, the past from our parents and so on, so on about simple the things. Old thoughts, can... Yes, <laughs> and from a woman, and from, and from a woman who does stop it now. Stop it. I'm trying to be serious here. And it's a serious a... show. You told me this was a serious show. No, I didn't. No. And you can learn so much about domestic tips from a woman who doesn't even clean her own sink. <laughs> now, you didn't say that, Angie. Did... No, you never no. told me that. Anyway, can I just say white vinegar? Yes. Right? We had oh, white yeah. vinegar. And tight. Um, fish, was, uh, not, not fish. Uh, bicarbonate of soda. Bicarbonate of soda. Bicarb white vinegar. Well, what else did we need? Tights. You could do lots of things with pairs of tights. A so pair of tights and lemon juice. Um, we were laughing. Yeah, yeah I know. We've got nine years hey, out of that. We should publish it as a book, shouldn't we? I think it should still be a book. Amazon, here we come. Yeah, so I kept, Angie, I kept them all. I kept copies of every single one. Did oh, you excellent. really? That's every Wednesday for nine years. Well, yeah. I think if the, if the title has something to do with bicarbonate of soda and pairs of tights, we should get the foreword written by the four puffs. I think I could arrange that quite easily. Oh, good. Are they still working together? Yeah, they do all kinds of things, and they're brilliant. I mean, they, they do yeah. um, everything from old-fashioned pantomime to yeah. big shows of their own. Really? So they're, oh. Yeah, they're still out there, Angie. You should track them down. There's I one guy called Ian Parkin, a friend of mine. He's one of the puffs. 
and he's so talented here, and he's a great, he's a real showman. Yeah. You know, he's, he's out there, he's real, he's fantastic. And a lovely guy too. Is Mike. it still politically correct to say Puff in England? In that context, certainly, yeah. because that's the name of the band, that's who they oh, are. Oh, fair enough, okay. because you, know? you have to be so careful now. Yeah, we don't. You do, but, we you don't. know. I don't even know what I don't even know what I am anymore. I haven't got a clue. Oh, I do. I'll tell you later. Go on, yeah, go on. No, don't. Don't you dare. Oh, I know what you're like. Dude, go oh my God. Phone me up later and tell me, Angie. Yeah. I know. So, complete non sequitur here with your terribly British accent, but aren't you also a Canadian citizen? I am, yeah. Um, I have family in Vancouver. Okay. And they're an absolutely lovely family. They're some of the loveliest people on the planet Earth. And when I was a young boy... Do you know there were only three places I ever wanted to live? One of them was um, the Western Isles of Scotland. Good God. Uh, I wanted to, always wanted to live in oh, Bournemouth. Yeah. Which oh. I never, and I made it here. And the other one was Vancouver, British Columbia. Oh, and wow. be, because of family. I first went there. I had my 18th birthday in Vancouver with family. Wow. Now oh. I decided then, that's it. Wow. But if you want to get into Canada winding forward quite a long way. To get into Canada, you, so they have a point system for immigration. Oh. And there's, there wasn't a lot of room for broadcast journalists. I see. I was, I was dealing with this agent in London, you know, uh, an immigration agent. And he said, Richard, now there's not a lot of call for it, but you've got so many points, you're almost there, but you need X amount of points to get in. Cut a long story short, uh, they said, they rang me up one day, and this is great. I thought he was joking. <laughs> He rang up one day. I said, uh, I can't remember his name. I was calling Frank. I said, hi, Frank. How's things? He said, uh, Richard, uh, you're not going to believe this, but there's a category for you to come into Canada now. I said, really? <laughs> said, yeah. There's only two. I said, what's that? He said, ballet dancer and broadcast journalist. <laughs> so <laughs> oh. I could have been the first broadcasting <laughs> ballet dancer <laughs> journalist. In Canada. But it meant that I got in. And, and guess who would have lent you her tights? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Your it's tights. My tights. I'd have and to I'd stretch them a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to stretch them, darling. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> oh, don't we no, use a car cover, actually, at night. Interesting. My tights, yeah. Yeah, Mar oh, Martin, Martin's just saying, how do, you get, uh, how do you get into Canada? Just tell them you like hockey. That's it. It's hockey. Vancouver Canucks. I mean, the, I was introduced to them when I was 18. I went back when I was 19. And my cousins spoiled me. So hi to all my family in Canada. I love you. They're such a lovely, they're genuinely lovely people. Really nice. Go tell them we're on our way. We'll be there shortly. I'd say be down soon. <laughs> Banging on the door. Speaking of yeah. family. Yeah. Well, yes, you've interviewed loads of my family, haven't you? Mike, Mike, Mike McGee and McCartney and his oldest. Oh, I love Mike. I think Mike, Mike is one of the loveliest, isn't he the loveliest guy in the world? Yes, he is. He's, he's, yeah. I think he's been on my show 10 times. Has he really? Yes. Yeah. So um, talented. And not that, I mean, everybody, he's obviously he's a celebrity in the UK, but it just breaks my heart that people don't know around the globe we, you know the beatles sort of you know the reach everybody knows of a certain age of course yeah like paul mccartney and paul's incredible talents it just breaks my heart that mike was never sort of recognized mm -hmm. as equally if not more talented in other directions well um, he, he said to me he said you know if 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 i'd have called myself mike mccartney he said that would be like elvis presley's son or daughter calling themselves something or other presley he says, so yeah. I had to invent something. And in yeah. Liverpool at those that time, there yeah. were only a few words that people could associate with. Uh, right. one, one was fab yeah. and one was gear. Yeah. He could yeah. have been Mike yeah. McFab. Yeah. He could have been Mike McFab. He said, but I, I didn't yeah. go with the fab, so I went with the gear. It sounded more like, you know. Yeah, it's a dead bit, gear. Dead a gear. For those, of, for those of you who don't say, yeah, and for those of you who don't speak Scouse, Scouse gear is the gear. It's, it's the business. Yeah. Come on, it's all right there. It's, Come the on, it's, it's, it's the case. dog's bollocks, isn't it? <laughs> that's, well, that's, that's kind of universal, Ruth. I've got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> because they can. Have you heard how's Martin? Can I ask a question? The can I ask? How's Martin? Is he all right? He's one of He's upstairs and his little. He's commenting. Yeah. Uh, he's running. Do you still keep him locked in there then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. We let him. We, we let, let him, him out to run the beach, but we've... we've and uh, to get the Christmas tree down out of the loft. Yeah. Is it time to get the tree down yet, Martin? Fuck 
the, the, the second word was, the second the second word word was, was off. off. Yeah. yeah. You must be a mind reader because I said to Ross today, here we are in July, and I'm, I'm terrible. I, th I, I shouldn't wish my life away because I was thinking to myself, we've done seven, nearly seven months through the year, and my sister will already have bought at least two of her Christmas presents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Elizabeth, oh. She, she starts buying yeah, perfumes and aftershaves and all that, wrapping them, cards well, a lot. In mm. America, once you get past the 4th of July decorations, um, about the beginning of September, the aisles in the drugstores are fighting. For, it's Halloween on one side and Christmas and Hanukkah on the other. Yeah. I mean, September, honest to God, 1st of September, you walk yeah. in the 99 cent store and everything merges. Dark, dark pumpkins. It all merges, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the yeah. Feast of St. Hallmark. <laughs> Is. Now, I haven't heard that for a long time. Now, now, the good thing is when you start to lose a little bit of memory, the old ones sound fantastic, don't they? Yes, yeah. Those well, when well, you think you've never heard them before. Right. Yeah, it's, it's like that old gag about the, uh, the five murderers on death row. They've been there 40 odd years and they've just got no new jokes because they haven't got any, any visitors or whatever. So they, they decide to number the jokes and they, they sit around banging on the on the cell walls and one of them will yell number 44 and they all fall down laughing. <laughs> they all start laughing. That's brilliant that is. Oh dear. And where's the tea? Are you drinking tea? I shouldn't be asking the questions. Are you drinking tea tonight? No, we Stop are. Stop interviewing me. It's we not are. your turn. We are. I know. Actually, sorry, Angie. I'm sorry. Cheers. We are actually drinking. Was oh, um, it saying Scotland? Slangeva. Slangeva. Or Slangeva. That's Ireland. our island, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we are drinking, um, a little bit of Mrs. McCartney's peach, Maharishi peach wine, because she also has wines and teas. She has Maharishi, mm -hmm. a little cold brewed Maharishi peach tea, some fresca and a teaspoonful of Aperol. Do you guys so, remember this? I do. Oh God, we were all together, weren't we? Wasn't In that Liverpool? a great night? You, oh, well, I believe so, but I had shingles, so I was under the weather and didn't know I had shingles at that stage. And didn't tell anybody. No. Poor little thing. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't got your shingle shots, folks, get, get them. them. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. I had, I had that. I suffered from that to about two years ago. I think it was. Oh, it's about. Oh, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what was happening. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's weird. And yeah. This doctor just took one look at me and said, "That's it." Yeah. If it's on one side of your body and you think you're electric, somebody set you electrically on fire. There used to be a song about, hey, hey, hi, diddle, diddle, Aunt, Aunt Isabel, Isabel Shingles have met in the middle. middle. She's 77 and God's in his heaven. And that is the end of the news. See? Did you see? Copyright, just... don't you dare put that on your next album or I'll have you. Was that, a, was that really a song? Yes. Is that yes. a genuine is oh, it yeah. was Joyce Grenfell, was Joyce Grenfell. Yeah. Oh, Joyce Grenfell. Oh, she wonderful. Oh, yeah. my God. She and was that, great. Yeah, we it saw that deadpan delivery. You know, wasn't it just beautiful? Yeah. That deadpan delivery. Yeah. Yeah. She was ter terribly posh and terribly rich. She was related Orphan. to uh, the Rockefellers. Or, um, you, which I huge, don't know. Some huge rich family like yeah. the Rockefellers. This is the BBC right? calling the world from London. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. 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 I had to do that. That was, that was a bit Eddie Izzard of you. And so to that point, I have to ask you, how yeah. in God's name in 2011 did you wind up on England's happy list along with Colin Firth, Eddie Izzard and the Archbishop of York? <laughs> it's great, isn't it? What? I've no what? idea. <laughs> Angie, yeah, I know. Isn't it a shock? I was at the station, HFM. Oh, can I just say hello just to a couple of people, please? Yeah. Uh, Steve Savile, Forest FM, Chris Jones, HFM, and Shelley Goldstein. Because she's having a lovely this evening. Isn't Groovy she Shelley. Groovy Shelley, yeah. Um, hello, Groovy Shelley. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. What were we talking about? So it was the silver badge for C uh, No, the independent happy list. The yes. independent newspaper put you on a happy list alongside yeah. the um, Archbishop of York and Eddie Izzard. Sandwiched in between those I two. Know, that was I I got a phone call. To bang to get on that oh, list. <laughs> my boss at HFM got a phone call and he said, um, this chap said, could I speak with Richard Earle? He said, oh, he's on air at the moment. Could he call me when he comes off? Yeah, please. Yes. Off, yes. yeah, oh, off. Yes. Lovely. Yeah. A life from Wimbledon. Yes. Anyway, so when I, when I came off air, when I came off air, I rang this guy back. He said, hello. He said, you've been nominated for the happy list. And I didn't know what he meant. I thought this is a weird phone call. This is one of those strange things. What are you wearing? Yeah. Um, and what it was, I used to do a lot of work for a hospice uh, in the town where I was brought up, uh, raising money, you know, for the, the local hospice. Because uh, my my dad 
died many, many years ago, and he was only 55 of cancer. And in fact, my mum died when she was 55 of a brain hemorrhage. So I always had links to the hospice movement because I think they do a brilliant job. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And someone had told them that I raised, I raised money. My brother Tom raises a lot more money than I do for them. And they put me forward to the happy list. And I went on the happy list and that was it. Yeah. But I loved on, on, on the internet when I was researching it, they sandwiched you between Colin Firth, Eddie Izzard and the Archbishop of York. Oh. I know. Hello. I know it's that bizarre. No and, connection. And, no connection. Really enough, years later, I actually, I actually did um, a whole marketing campaign for uh, the Church of England in the middle of England for this huge concert in Leicester in Abbey Park. Huge mm -hmm. dome stages and God knows what and everything else. And the Archbishop of Canterbury turned up. Oh. And, I, and I was totally shy. I went, hello. And I thought it was a bloke in fancy dress. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise it was the yeah. real McCoy. Yeah. You know, you so, so he was probably delivering the piano for the other blokes. Lovely. <laughs> Yeah, so that's how that came about, the happy list. That was 2010, I think, something like that. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Oh, oh dear, dear. Did you um, get a, a certificate or a, a plaque or something? No, you don't get a badge or anything. I've been waiting oh, for my interview for years. Nothing happened. We could make you one. But yeah, could you of, make me one? Yeah. Speaking, speaking of badges, didn't you get a silver badge for singing on Blue Peter? I did, oh. yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. Yeah, um, okay. when I was, I think I must have been about, 10 or 11 years old. I've always written songs. I love songwriting. I still do it today. I just love now it. Now he tells us. Yeah. Oh, I just love it. I've got I my... should introduce you to somebody. That this is what... Talking. These are chopsticks, right? Yeah. These are chopsticks. And I always have a bit of paper or magazine for me. And they're my drums, you know. And I can sit all night. Yeah. Oh, I've got Ringo's worried. I just love, I've always loved music. Yeah. And as a boy, I used to write all these songs. And I sent this little tape off to Blue Peter. Do you remember Christopher Trace? Yes. yes. So for Farrow our American, Singleton. So Farrow for our Singleton. American, so it was the real early days. For, and tell, so tell our American friends what Blue Peter is or was. Blue Peter is, and still is, but it's a children's program that went out, I think it was about five o'clock in the evening. So you yeah. get in from the school, you put Blue Peter on. On the television, uh, not radio, TV. On TV, yeah. yeah. And, and it was a, a magazine program for children. So one minute they'd teach you how to do a, a knot with rope. Yep. And then the next minute they'd have an elephant come in that would do a poo on the carpet. And the next minute they'd have a guy climbing up Nelson's column to clean it, that kind of thing. Yeah. And they'd get children to write in with stories and things they'd done. Or, you know. And I wrote in and said, I've written a song called Guitar Girl. And uh, not... Didn't think you'd hear anything of it. Oh, please come and see us. So <laughs> I went along and I, I was on Blue Peter and it, and it was, and it's, uh, how'd it go? It was something like this. Hang on. You are my guitar girl, my one and only star girl. Together in the future, you and me. Well, I've wandered up and down and all around this town, but I've never found a girl like Danny Bum bum guitar girl, you're my guitar girl. Well, I never knew a little, 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 little without you. Anyway, it went on like that. It was like a little wow. country, country song. Well, yeah, no. Oh, very cool. Rick has got talent. And did you get your actor's equity card and did they pay the royalties for that? <laughs> see no, you see, this is the thing. No one ever does, do they? No. Um, I was once in a film, though. I was in a film. I read about that. Tell, tell our viewers. Yeah. Mansfield okay. Park, it was a Jane Austen book called Mansfield Park. Yes, right. And um, it was filmed in 1998-99, and um, a beautiful thing, really. Um, and I was a footman in this film, and I can't remember his name. What was the name of the very famous actor? Um, Johnny Lee, Harold Pinter. Sir Harold Pinter. Now. I was in the dressing room and it was getting like, the, I call them sideboards. Yeah, you get the sideburns put on, the sideboards were being put on and they're changing your hair a little bit and all that. You very, and because um, it's a period piece, you know, you think of Jane Austen, it's all that, it's all romantic and everything. And he's sitting next to me, again, his makeup done and everything. And I went, 
you're Harold Pinter. And he went, you're him, aren't you? I said, yeah. And it reminded me of John Lennon in A Hard Day's Night. You're him, aren't you? No, yeah. not really. No, she's, she's more like him than I am. It was kind of like that, you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, and I was in awe because I've always loved Pinter's work. Yeah, yeah a great right. writer, amazing writer. And there I was standing by this mantelpiece in this great mansion, you know, talking to Harold Pinter. Wonderful. Yeah. That was Johnny Lee Miller. Must have been one of his early films. Johnny Lee Miller was in that yeah, too, wasn't he? He was. In fact, I played football with him on the in the park, and we got told off by the uh, director. Oh. Her, name, her name was uh, Rosima. I can't remember. Patricia Rosima, something like that. Oh. Brilliant director. Great director. And but it's on that, it was on that set that I learned what a best boy and key grip were because I'd always wondered what they were. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was, I was, when I was working in the film industry, because obviously it was best boy. So, and I didn't want to be the one to say, well, best girl, you know, whatever. So I just, had them, I just had them call me second best boy. <laughs> <laughs> but you had a good career too, Ruth. You were a singer, weren't you? you I you was. Know? I did all of that nonsense. You can see all, a, huh? a bit of a video at ruthmccartney.com that my brilliant husband put together. So six minutes in 63 years in six minutes. Thank you. That's the one. Um, yeah, so if anybody's curious, it's a Miramax film and it's called Mansfield Park. And um, look out for Richard stood standing in fireplace with yes. sideboards on. With his sideboards. And they didn't fall off either. Absolutely. It's very cold. It's very cold. Uh, yeah. So you're a, can I just say, ladies, you're a very bad influence on me. Why? Good. Uh, oh, it's very happening. pleased to hear that. Yes, Cheers. So, so uh, Merry July. Merry July. Oh, so, can I just uh, say uh, Merry Fourth of July to everyone in the United States? Because I never get a chance to say that to anyone. Okay. Okay. Merry Which Fourth year do you want it for, this year or last year? Both. Yeah. Both, yeah. Angie. Both, yeah. Independence Day. We actually call it Treason Day, but, you know, yeah. whatever. Oh, we made well, a <laughs> low profile on that day. <laughs> you we, get a, we get a helmet and get under the bed because we lost that fight. <laughs> oh, dear, yeah. Yeah. yeah Martin's making much Martin said it's a, his mother told him it's it's a holiday in Germany. Uh, he called her on the 4th of July because, you know, she used to live in Florida and Martin spent some time in Florida. He called his mum in Germany to say happy 4th. And she said, oh, yes, it's a holiday here too in Germany. And he said, well, why would it be a holiday in Germany? She said, because the English lost. Oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You can hear it, can't you? You know, go karate, I mean? go karate. Yeah, yeah love Come that on. One. Oh, so listen, I remember you coming to Liverpool with Roz, yeah, for the launch of my book. That was yeah. 10 years ago, would you believe? I know, is it, it that's ten frightening, years last Angie. January? Yeah, 10 years last January. That's ten right. That launch was great. That was a it good, was good, wasn't it? It was yeah. great, and Two some nights. lovely people there. And yeah. the thing was, Angie, the whole of Liverpool turned out for you. Did that surprise you? I know I'm asking you a question. Oh, it did, did surprise that surprise yes. you? Yeah, I mean, she filled the Philharmonic Bowl twice. Yeah, two yeah. Nights, two nights running, and we had the late, great Billy Hatton from the foremost. Oh, what a lovely um, man. Oh, yeah. he was lovely. Was and he, yeah. uh, Frida, Frida Kelly. Kelly. Mm -hmm. E. Price was the compare. We had, uh, yeah, we had, it was It was really, really a great thing. And nice guy, Pete Price. What a professional man. Oh, he's, oh, like, he's great, he's yes. Like, yeah, he's like my, he was mm -hmm. the first gay out man I ever knew. He, I was probably about... 1968, nine, whatever, and he got the newspaper suit and the big fur coat and the pink, you know, shoes and whatever. Mm. And um, he was very brave when you think about that in those days in the mm. 60s, coming out as gay well, in Liverpool, too, and, in Liverpool, know, tough guy and, town, and trying to keep your job in broadcasting. But he's a real trailblazer. I don't mm. think he's ever got enough credit for that, actually. Mm. He's very strong minded, though. He's, he's, oh, he's, he's lovely. Very, very focused, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, he's great. But that that was some fun times. But speaking of book launches, you're you're an author. Tell us. Yes. About oh, that about was. You. Now, can I? Well, yeah. That that's that's. A, now we haven't got all night, but. Oh, well, maybe. Well, brief. Well, uh, briefly. Okay, very briefly. Again, I was in Vancouver, and it was about the year. Uh, when was it? Two thousand, something like that. And I was coming home after visiting family and I was in the basement and this very uh, elderly uncle of mine, a lovely, my uncle Alex, and another Scott, and he was very like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And Richard, this is the family photograph album. So we go through the photograph album, you see. Yeah. I said, oh my God, who's that? He said, oh, that's your great uncle William. Now, great uncle William was killed in the First World War. He went down on a ship, but we don't know any more than that. Now, cut a long story short, I was on the plane coming back and I thought, 
isn't it a shame no one seems to know any more? Right. And that led to the research. And cutting out an awful long story, it turned out that William was the fifth engineering officer on a ship called the Royal Edward that was sunk in the Aegean Sea in 1915. Now, what makes it different was that she was the first conscripted ocean-going liner to be sunk by enemy fire in the 20th century. So that that made it that made it um, uh, publishable, if you like, as a book. Yes, yes. And a yes. publisher got on to me and said, "If you write this story, we'll publish this." Wow. And it took me two or three years to write this book, but it it took me out to Canada. It took me out to Greece, where the ship sank, and it just closed in the Aegean, heading for Gallipoli. Wow. And no one knew where it had actually sunk, really. So I did my research, and I hired. This is funny. There's a tiny little island that it sank off called Nisiros near Kos. And I have you ever tried hiring a ship from no. five Greek sailors? No, no. it I'll ain't easy. List. It's not easy. I can't swim. I'm terrified of water and I don't speak Greek. And I didn't have a lot of money with me, I've got to be honest. So I, I'm negotiating with these guys on the on the key. Uh -huh. Eventually, this guy said, I'll take you, I'll take you. And he, he got these four guys, and off we went. Now, when you're to, out do, own, to do exactly what? Yeah. Here it comes. Here it comes. These four guys so, didn't have a piano. Right on the ocean, and you can see where it's nice and calm. It's nice and calm, but suddenly you enter deep ocean, and uh -huh. suddenly this boat goes bang. What? Yeah. Serious. And I was so ill. Uh, now the the reason behind all of this, Ruth, to answer your question, is that I had the exact coordinates of where the ship sank. So when it approached those coordinates, I told him to cut the engine. And I'd made a plaque. I'd had a plaque made, I should say, of granite, English granite. And it was engraved on both sides. So whichever way it would land on the seabed, it would have the message on it, oh. which says, basically, here lies the souls and the ship of the Royal Edward, basically. You're not lost at sea. You were not lost at sea. We now know where you are. A thousand men died that morning in six or nine minutes. And I put some Bougainvillea flowers on the water because they're a bit like poppies. Yeah. And I, I read a few words and then put this bit of granite into the ocean. Oh, lovely. And that was the end of my book. And I didn't know what else to do after that. And it, it took so long to get to that point. In the book, I actually list all the, the troops oh. that died that day. Oh. And I, I occasionally get the odd letter from someone that says, we now know where he is. Oh, isn't that lovely? It's not lost at sea anymore. In oh. London, opposite the Tower of London, there's the thing called the Tower Memorial. And on the Tower Memorial, you can drive straight past it. You wouldn't know it was there, really. And right. yet it's quite a large obelisk kind of thing. You know, it's a big, big thing. Yeah. And on there are listed all the ships, mercantile ships, yeah. that were sunk or destroyed by enemy fire in the First and Second World Wars. Yeah. And on there, Royal Edward, and there's all the li their lists, and it virtually matches everything in my book. And there he is, William Doug Duncan Dick Nimmo. That was my mum's ne maiden name, Nimmo, yeah. uh, who was Scottish. Like, my mum was like, Scottish. Like, my grandmother was Scottish. And I've got a story about my grandma. You might be... Oh, my tea, grandma, right? Now, my grandma, I used to go and see her every Friday night to do all her shopping, right? Her messages. I had to go and do her messages, you know. Your messages, oh, yes. yes. Your errands. Yeah, messages. So, but the, I had an ulterior motive. Okay. I wasn't just the good boy she thought I was, really, because when Grandma let me buy her shopping for her, she also bought me my favourite comic and the New Musical Express. Aha. Uh -huh. and, and that was my Bible. From the yep. age of about seven onwards, that was my Bible, every Friday. Anyway, cut a long story short, she would say to me, Richard, would you like a cup of tea? I said, yes, please, Grandma, that would be lovely. And I've got the pot here because I kept, she died in 1970. And this was our two cup teapot. Oh, oh this, has been, this has been with me all my life. And um, I, I was reminded of this when I saw some pictures of the Beatles when they stayed in Bangor uh, with yeah. the Maharishi. Yeah. And in the kitchen, if you might see these pictures, they're in the kitchen having breakfast. And on yeah. the table... Yeah. Is a swan two two cup or a swan four cup? They're all. They're, it's called a swan two cup. This is. Yes. This yes. is the baby of the swan family. And I thought, no. oh my god, that's there's grandma's pot. <laughs> there we are. Yes. That's, 
That yeah. was, I was, when I was talking to Richard last week, that when the Beatles were in Bangor, that was the weekend, unfortunately, that we lost Brian Epstein. Yeah. And um, yeah. that those Swan Two Cup teapots would have been for the dorms, for the students who would have come down to the canteen and wanted a pot of tea to take back to the dorm, to the room, you that see. Makes sense. That's, yeah. that's why there wouldn't be the Four Cup Swans. But they've got, yeah. they've got Swan kettles and all kinds. They're still in business, aren't they, Swan? I don't know. I don't oh, know. They no, they advertise on Liverpool Live Radio. They've got they've got Swan tea and toast. How do you guys know all that? I mean, how would you know? <laughs> That's like That's some great. random piece of information. Well, because on Sundays we listen to Liverpool Live. We, uh, That's we crazy. To be on Billy Butler's still on. And there's if anybody in the audience is interested in listening to Worldwide Radio for free, point your browser to https radio dot garden. It's not radiogarden.com. It's not dot it's dot god at radio dot garden. And it's a Google Earth globe map with millions of green little pins in it. And wherever there's a pin, there's a radio station you can listen to. Do you know what though, Ruth? We have a problem in the UK with it because you can't access outside the UK with Radio Garden anymore. Oh really? Yeah, some sort of copyright law. I used to listen to it all the time because I used to Vancouver radio. Yeah. yeah. California, some of the California stages are brilliant. Yeah. And, but no, it's... Um, can't do it. We, oh, well, uh, for our American viewers, radio.garden still works worldwide. Yeah, yeah. That's great. So you can listen to Forest FM, by the way, on that. I was just going to say oh. you can listen to Oh, you would. No, you would. Uh, dude, look, it's next. Is it on, on your list? On the list. On my list. On I list. promise. I promise it is. So I, I'm, actually, I'm actually leaning on, on Roz's Vogue at the moment. Oh, jolly. Because, because they're very comfy to lean on. Oh, they're <laughs> better than the table. Um, how did Forest FM come about? Well, um, what well, for me, I mean, I, I was, this is really, oh, you'll like this one. This is great. This is even weirder than, my life's been kind of weird. Um, uh, I, w I wanted, Ros and I wanted to move away to start a new life. And as I said, we have three choices, but we chose Bournemouth. We both love Bournemouth. We know where we are with it. We like the seaside. We like seagulls. We like pine trees, all that kind of business. Yeah. Great place to be. But I didn't want to give up on radio. So I, I, I did my research on radio stations around this area, including BBC Solent. I went to see them and so on and so forth. But this particular station, it caught my interest, Forest FM, because if you listen to it, it's yeah. the only one that actually sounds like someone sitting in a microphone doing something that's kind of engaging, you know, the music's great. So yeah. I rang him up, this guy, didn't know him from Adam, called Steve Savile. He's listening now probably. Hi, Steve. And Steve said, yeah, when you get down here, come and see me. We'll have a chat. Okay. So I walked into Forest FM and he, we shook hands and he said, you don't know me, do you? I said, no. He said, well, I used to listen to you every day on the BBC. Oh. I said, sorry? He said, you lived in Gretton, didn't you? That's a village in Northamptonshire where I lived. He said, yeah, it's just a tiny village. He said, well, I live in the village next to yours oh. it's called Haringworth, which is only two miles away, all our lives. Oh, my right? God. Oh. He said, did you go to the boys' school? I said, yeah. He said, so did I. <gasps> wow. I said, oh, my God. He said, there's the studio. Help yourself. Oh, boy. And I've yeah. been there now for four and a half years. That is fantastic. And I, I just, love it. That's, I love it. But well, don't tell all, Steve I said that, will you? No, no, no. 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 All of our all of our friends, um, our streamyard. For some reason, it's not showing the um, comments on the on the broadcast this week. But I'm seeing them on my on my iPhone. <laughs> and um, Martin shared Radio Garden, and Ashley's going to check it out. And Marion Foreman is just trying it from Long Island, and it works. So you'll probably get a bunch of new listeners from America to Forest FM. Good. Um, well, I'll say hello. If they get in touch on my, well, what, what day is this? If they get in touch tomorrow morning when I'm on, you yeah. see the time difference, of course. I mean, yeah. I'm on from um, 10 till 12 UK time. Okay. But if you get in touch with Forest FM, either online or whatever, uh, I'll say hi. That is absolutely oh, great. Good. Yeah. So Forest FM, if they would, when you go into radio.garden, you, you probably need to search uh, the town it's is Bournemouth or is it a different town? I would no, I would put if you just put Forest FM Verwood V E R W O W O O D Verwood okay. UK. Okay, it sounds like it should be in California, doesn't it? Verwood, Verwood, California. Yeah, or we could call hey. it Ver Verwood and swap the D for a T like Wimbledon. 
I couldn't believe it. <laughs> did you watch the final? Did you watch the final? I, did. I didn't, no, I didn't. But. No, we it were working was, all day Sunday. Yeah. It was spectacular. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Good. It I, have it, I have it taped because our McCartney group, AU in Vienna, our partner, uh, Raymond Karl in Vienna, they have the uh, McCartney Group EU, I think it is, or dot com. We've got several websites for that. They manage out of there. They handle five uh, male tennis players. So we have a whole tennis division under the McCartney Lifestyle brand in Vienna, Austria. So I have the tennis channel and I have it taped and I'll go back and watch it for sure. Hey, yeah, wow. two, two of our McCartney team, uh, team McCartney players won uh, silver medals at the Rio Brazil Olympics. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. Good. Have you ever won a badge for anything? Have you ever won a badge or a medal or? No, no. Oh, and has. Oh yeah. yes, I got a medal when I worked for the uh, army base in Munich. Munich. Mm -hmm. I used to send uh, magazines and sort well, of. Well, she used to pack boxes. boxes she she yeah. worked for Aphis, which is the um, the commissary type stuff, and they would yeah, ship yeah. stuff out to uh, Iraq uh, in the early days. Oh. Wow. Uh, and, and she, I used she to put, put false... Playboys and things in a false bottom in the box. She used to put Playboy magazines in a false magazines. bottom and ship them to the troops. <laughs> <laughs> they gave her a medal. And I was actually due to go out there, and the depot I was going to as a, an honoured guest was bombed. Yeah. The night wow. before I was due to fly out there to visit the troops. Yeah. So that never happened. Oh, no. yeah. oh but I have to say, can I just say this, though? Because you are Dr. Angie McCartney. Fact. That is correct. She's it's she's a doctor of business from the City University Los Angeles CULA, and her sorority sisters are oh no big deal. Uh, the ladies that have doctorates from that university: Coretta Scott King, Martin Luther King's widow, uh, Aretha Franklin. Oh uh, yes, that's right. Yeah, and Ange. And Ange, <laughs> the bottom of the barrel. Congratulations! I've never really had a chance to say that. Congratulations! Mm. Yeah, no, it was a big deal. Mm. It is. Yeah, of course it is. It's wonderful. And, well, news. especially for me. I mean, I left school at eleven when the bombing was going on, and I didn't start till I was six because of bad health. So my education really was only from six till eleven, and the rest I've googled it all. <laughs> Thank well, the God. rest is called life. Life is one of the best universities yeah, there true. is. I mean, yeah, sure. uh, that's what I've learned anyway. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I was no great academic. I, all I've done is work. I, all I ever did in my life was go to work. I didn't do any other thing to do. Yeah. Just wake up in the morning, go to work. Because that was yeah, right. yeah. yeah. I mean, it, but that's, that's kind of... Didn't do us any harm, though, did it? It's kind of our generation, isn't it? You know, it's it's not oh, really. louder on those violins, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of making uh, funny gestures, John Lennon used to do that. Um, how close? Oh yeah, to uh, Bournemouth, where John's auntie Mimi had a home. Pool, right? Yeah, she did. Just just down the road on Sandbanks. Uh huh. Yeah, so Sandbanks. Close? Yeah, not far. But what happened was, um, it was redeveloped. Oh, really? So the, the, house, house the house doesn't exist anymore that Mimi had. Oh, what a shame. No, it was, uh, it, the land was sold. I think it's a great shame that, you know. Oh, it I know. Seems, it yeah. It was part of major history, music history, that. And, um, That's right, yes. But it's, it's now a multi-million pound home on the seafront and everything else. And, wow. Yeah. Paradise Road it's on, I think, in Sandbanks. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Bournemouth is for, for people, for the American people who don't know, if you're planning a UK trip, first of all, you need you must buy a ticket to ride by this one, which has got all the Beatle locations. And secondly, um, I would definitely put Bournemouth on your travel list. It's sort of the south of France of England, isn't it? Great place. I mean, I, I've always loved it because yeah. of its... Um, yeah, well, it is pretty. It's just really pretty. And it's got seven miles of some of the best beach... Same. Sandy oh, beach. Uh, in Europe, seven yeah. miles of unbroken beach. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Uh, yeah the, the front, uh, the, the promenade at the front there is beautiful too. Oh, it's outrageous. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It, it reminds me of, of the Croisette in Nice, you know, when you're literally between Nice and Cannes and Joan Lapel, oh, whatever. I love, do you know, I love Nice. It's one of my favorite places. Yeah, well, it's you very like Bournemouth. It's, it's, Bournemouth is the English yeah. Nice, kind of. It has that, but it's pebbly. Yes, but well, I used to look at the old. I like the old airport. Yes, fly in. It was very um, Casablanca, very Noel Coward. Yes, with the palms and 
and you'd come into this twee little airport. Although the landing was always dodgy. You thought you were going to land in the sea. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. Love, love Noel Coward. We went to a marvellous party with Nunu no, and Nada Nada and Nell. They, they said, come as you are. are. So we went as we were. And we, we stayed, stayed as, as we were. were. It, it was hell. hell. One of my favourite people is Noel Coward. Can I tell Noel you a little Coward. story? Yes. Let me tell you this little story. Um, I borrowed a book from my local library when I was a boy because Noel Coward was a great wit he had that dry wit. I mean, it was you either got it or you didn't. And I really loved it. Yeah. And this book was the complete works of Noel Coward, complete with all his anecdotes and everything else. Yeah. And it was only when I got this book home, it had been signed by Noel Coward. Oh. I thought, oh, wow, what a book. Anyway, it was running out of his time. I took it back to the library in my local town of Corby. That night, the library burnt to the ground. <laughs> Oh, and shit. everything in that library, or its technical library, the whole thing was burned to the ground, along yeah. with that Noel Coward book. If I had just left it at home for one more day, that oh. book would have been mine. Oh. So, forward 25 years, I'm in an antique shop, and I look upon this shelf, and there's the complete works of Noel Coward. I thought, yeah. I've got to have that, regardless yeah. of what it might cost. I think it cost about £15 or something. Oh. Took it off the shelf, opened it up. It's signed by Noel Coward. So I bought the book. So I got it back. It was like divine intervention or something, but I got, so it's on my bookcase upstairs, yeah. Grief, I absolutely I love Noel Coward. And the work he did with Gertrude Lawrence as well. Yeah. Yes. And all those, oh, God, wonderful stuff. Absolutely. absolutely. You can't make it up. Yeah. And pe people had hits with, with their, his songs. Even today, oh, the Pet Shop always had yeah. hits. And yeah. Shola yeah. Armour had a hit, you know. Uh, oh, God, just poor, wonderful. Poor Martin is sometimes subjected to us singing, don't let's be beastly, beastly to, to the, the Germans. Germans. Oh, as good. we've obviously got them on the run. And don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington, whatever <laughs> you do. Don't ever yeah. do that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, on the day that World War II ended, uh, May the 8th, 1945, I worked in the box office at the Royal Court Theatre in Liverpool, and Noel Coward was appearing there at the time with Madge Elliott was her name. Was it Blythe Spirit? Or? Uh, no, it was um, Sigh No More. It was a musical review. Oh. And word came to us in the box office that after the show that night, Mr. Coward was going to throw a party for the staff and, and their family and uh, the orchestra and whatnot. And I, I said, I was only like 15 at the time, I said, oh, I won't be able to go. I couldn't stay out that late. So the box office manager S told the theatre manager, and he uh, duly went in and told Mr. Coward about this poor little teenager. Oh, and he bless. said, bring her to me. So he took me in, and I, I was knocking my knees with fear going in his dressing room. He said, sit down, child. What seems to be the problem? <laughs> And I told him, I said, oh, I'd love to go to the party, but I wouldn't be allowed to stay out so late. I'd have to so, get my mother's permission. permission yeah. So he went in his drawer, he opened the drawer and got out one of those big white five pound notes. Oh, the old fivers, yeah. yeah. And he got a piece of paper and wrote, what's your mother's name? I said, Edith. So dear Edith, you know, and he wrote this letter saying, if, if you will allow your daughter to come to the party tonight, I'm giving her a five pound note for taxis both ways. And I can assure you she'll be well taken care of and she'll be safe. And oh. So I duly left right away, went home on the tram. To save the money. <laughs> to save the money. I didn't, yeah. I didn't I, want to break a fiver. No, 14 <laughs> tram to Carlane and went and asked my mother and she was so impressed. And she let me get changed into my best frock and he put a bit of lipstick on. Oh. And go back Which and you went, should have done today. I know. <laughs> and I, I, Stop we, picking on her, you. You're always picking on her. Oh, no. Elder abuse. You put no, up with that, Angie. I love, I love it, yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I went to the party, and a marvellous party, and I still remember it. And I was oh. 15, and I'm, what am I now, 93? Yeah. It's one of those days, nights in my life that I'll never forget. That's and wonderful. This, it's a wonderful it's story. Amazing. And God knows what happened to the note. Oh, I know. I wish I've I could. got one of those. Have, Have you really a five-pound yeah. note? Wow. Oh, no, it. I mean the note that Noel Coward wrote oh, to my grandmother. Oh, that one. Oh, my giddy. Yeah. Disappeared. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. That's a great shame. So many things I wish we'd kept, but... It's, hey, it's crazy. We, we did you not can't keep it. everything, Angie, you know? You, no, you I know. Well, you can't. I, I am a bit of a collector. I, I've been a collector all my life. I don't know what that's all about, really. I've, I'm You're a real... A I am, too, completely, yeah. 
whether it be records, especially records. I love music anyway. Yeah. But my father turned me on to classical music when I was a boy. Um, he liked Mendelssohn and uh, he, he liked Greek. He liked a lot of um, uh, Scandinavian composers and, and so on. But he didn't he, know there were any. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, Richard, are you familiar with a cabaret artist called Randy Rainbow? Uh, yes, and oh. I'm familiar with Randy Rainbow through you. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. He yes. is brilliant. You put these clips up and stuff, and then I hear him. Yes. Yeah. Very Diana, Diana uh, Fimiano is asking, what is your favorite collection? Do you have, do you collect only one thing, or do you have different genres? And, and uh, I've gone through phases in my life. Is that Diana, did you say? Yes, Diana Fimiano. Hi, Diana. Um, no, I've collected so many things. I started with coins when I was a young boy. Uh, a, a man once was doing a Roman dig near where I lived, and I sat on the edge of this mucky thing with my legs dangling over, and he got a jam jar. I said, what are they, sir? What are they? He said, that they're coins, Roman coins. I said, can I have one? He said, of course you can. He took one out and gave me one. And from that moment, that was it. And I still occasionally collect the odd coin, uh, predominantly uh, British coins. You have to specialise, otherwise you go all over the place. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then another weird one. Do you know, really, this is really weird. I, I was at a stall in the 80s, and this guy had this two, like two bits of wood, and they were like put together with two brackets, and that's all it is. Uh, only about that big, like something like that. I said, What's that? He said, It's a tie press. I said, A what? He said, It's a tie press. In it. In it. I said, How much is it? 50p. So I bought it for 50p. <laughs> and from that moment on, I researched Thai presses and I ended up with about 50 of them. <laughs> they're, all, they're all different inlaid wood with uh, all kinds of veneers and all kinds. And they were actually used for pressing bow ties in the 19th century. Oh my and God, you would put a bow tie in it, screw it down between these two pieces of wood and leave it overnight. Oh and that was it pressed. And presses. so you've got 50 tie presses, which prompts me i have to ask how many and bow ties, ties do you own i have three ah uh, okay so I have three. but three, I'll three on. So with, with the right presses, you you've got three three on and 47 in the wash that's right <laughs> yeah. and but records i've always collected records uh predominantly beetle records um i guess it's a bit cliche talking to you guys but i've yeah. i've it's the, it's like everyone that i've my age group and I've, I've got them all the way back from all the Tony Sheridan right all the way through, everything. Oh. And I used to get two two of each, one to play, one to keep. Wow. Um, oh. And oh. Like, I did that with John Lennon and George Harrison. Oh, my God, what a beautiful man he was. Yeah. Yes. What a fabulous composer of music. Incredible. You just listen to All Things Must Pass, but really – the guy was something else. He was, he really was. Very spiritual. Yeah. So you know, he was always uh, described as the quiet beetle, but he was such a funny man. Yeah. Such Great a sense, sense of humor. Sense of humor. Yeah. Wonderful sense of humor. Well, we wouldn't have all those Monty Python movies if it wasn't for him mortgaging exactly. his house. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So, but but my favorite album by him is a thing called Living in the Material World. Yeah. yeah. It's been described as a bit morose, but it's actually beautiful. Yeah, uh, it's tantamount to classical music. Some of it, it's really stunning. I'd recommend that to anyone. Mm. So, did you when you you had a, a visit to Abbey Road in twenty two, right during the whole pandemic thing? Was that was it part of your record collection that drove you to go there, or what? What was the story behind that? No, Abbey Road? It, it was it's quite ro funny because Roz, um, her last name is Argent, and her yes. brother Rod Argent yes. um, founded a band called the Zombies. Yes, yes, and. Um, they're doing as well now as they ever did, really. They're yeah. incredible, incredible band. I mean, they've just gone into the oh, American well. charts and the British charts again with a, a new album, can you believe? Yeah, fantastic. But they were doing this thing, which was live from Abbey Road. Uh, and they were doing this concert that was being recorded. It's available, actually. You can get it somewhere online. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And they, we sat there, and there was an audience of, I guess, between 50 and 100 people in this audience watching them play. But it was the whole experience. Yeah. From this, I first visited Abbey Road in 1972 yeah. with my friend. And in those days, nobody went to look at a zebra crossing. They didn't know the story, really. Yeah. 
So we were there on our own. We walked up and down this zebra crossing all day. We, there was only the two of us there. I actually stood on the steps of Abbey Road by the railing. Yep, really yeah. There, and my mate took my picture and all the rest of it. And we nattered to the dorm and everything. You couldn't do that today. No, and I'm no. so glad that happened because that's who we were as kids. I've even got in my scrapbook, right? Get this, a whole page of leaves from Abbey Road. Oh, my God. In from plastic. The, you are probably the bugger that used to st uh, pinch the gravel, gravel from Rembrandt. Out of our driveway. Would yeah. I do such a thing, Angie? No, no. Of I'm a good boy. Never, <laughs> Sometimes. Ever well, this, <laughs> this has been Rembrandt, what a house Rembrandt was, my God. Yeah, yeah but it's amazing. I mean, it's it's not that big of a house. It was huge when we moved out of our one-bedroom flat and on the Kirby okay. Trading Estate into Rembrandt. It seemed it's like all relative. Buckingham Palace. Yeah. But when I think back now, we had a loo and a sink downstairs when you come into the door on the right of the cloakroom. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, upstairs we had one one bathroom that had – a bathtub, no shower, and a sink in it, and then next door was a little was a, a, a toilet, loo, a yeah. toilet. And you know, was it. it was a five bedroom house, and it had one bathroom and two loos on two different floors. You wouldn't that wouldn't happen nowadays. Everybody no. wants their own bog, don't they? We only had one telephone, which was under the <laughs> bed, the uh, on one television <laughs> set. Hey, can you remember? This is going to be crazy. This could lead us into very strange directions. But can you remember, like when window frames were just metal? And in the in the winter, they all froze on the inside. Oh yeah, yeah. they froze on the inside. Ice was on the inside of the house. Put, you had to put towels on the windowsill to yeah. get condensation. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. 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 How did we survive so, this? You I were lucky. You were know. lucky. Uh, you were lucky. Try to tell them that he says, "What bloody believe you?" Yeah. Uh, tell, I'll yeah. Tell you what. Well, thank you uh, so much for all of your time today. Yeah. And uh, I've enjoyed it. It's been an absolute blast. I, I, God, this is great. I know, I know you were kind of dreading it, but I told you it wouldn't be too much of a, an inquisition. But for our very special guests, and I know Paul Moody will be uh, waiting for this part, yeah. oh, of course, but, but you have to be subjected to the limerick. The limericks. The, oh, the limericks these days. The closing yes. limerick. We usually, get it wrong. we usually get it wrong the first time, so you might have to you hear it twice. Mm -hmm. But you see, um, all righty then. A, a one, two, two three. three. There mm -hmm. once was a... See? see yeah. Screwed it right up. Rubbish. Okay. Four, Rubbish. five, okay. six. No, a one, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> There and once was, was a muso named, named Richie, whose, whose singing could sometimes get pitchy. To the airwaves he went as a broadcaster gent, but for drumming he still got that itchy. Ta da! Oh, Off you go. oh, that's really sweet. Thank you, guys. I love you. Thanks ever love so much. You too. Love you too. Love to Thanks. Ross. Thanks for yeah, we'll do, darling. I will. tuning in all yeah. over, and uh, we'll see you all of a sudden. And go tell tell the folks the name of your book if we can still find it. On Amazon, it, it, it's called uh, "Fastest to Canada." Fastest to, to Canada. Canada. Royal Edward from Govan to Gallipoli. Govan being in Scotland, where she was built. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All okay, right, my darling. sweet. We'll give my love to Bournemouth and uh, cheers. Good, good. Happy happy hour and thank you. Thank you for staying. We'll, we'll see you yeah. all. Ciao ciao. Bye bye. Chin chin. Bye bye. Chin chin. <laughs>